We are, as part of our process, looking at debt recovery. We are looking at a range of alternatives that would allow us to get money back. I'm very much conscious of uh, the vulnerable nature of the people who have been assessed for these charges. We are working, obviously, with Surgic with regards to what alternatives we have for legal recovery. How is that best done? Uh, whether or not there can be uh, charges on property, and um, whether or not we actually do take action in court. Clearly, that's not what we do. It would be that would be part of the legal remit, but it is looking at those um, and really what other alternatives are available for us to try and get that money in before we declare that we're not going to be able to get it. Very much with the debt collector's hat on, there are two issues, which is why this was split into historic and current. It's very much that historic, there are old debts which are much harder to collect. Uh, the likelihood for those collections uh, is much decreased. There is then the key issue, which in part is the direct debit element, doing the assessments quickly, getting people into a culture that they do have to pay because effectively I will be sending you a letter saying you've not paid, I will be taking action, I will pass it on to the legal process to do that quickly, and getting the mindset that you do have to pay, rather than the historic ones, which have clearly gone on for some considerable time, that people have felt that they didn't have to pay. So effectively, as with any backlog, is what we've dealt with in any of the previous ones. It's encircle backlog, see what we can sort out with those, but at the same time, try and get the ongoing payments into some kind <coughs> of good quality order. But the percentage collections that we'll get on current debts will be a lot higher than it ever will be with regards to the historic debt. So it is looking at those kind of alternatives. Clearly, it comes with risks, as you suggest, there are external alternatives. Uh, they would have to be handled incredibly sensitively with regards to the people that you're going after, which is where we've been working with our colleagues in legal, as to how that is best done, whether they're not directly by us. But clearly, putting it out to people does have both the risk and reward, potentially the upset, but also getting the in, which is something that we all think is how we go forward. <laughs> Comment on um, out of the 19 hours that we've got, four of them are passing into um, future council to be dealt with under there. Uh, my limited understanding of the future council project is going to be huge, and my nervousness is passing and as into that category in, in, to be dealt with under that process. They could get lost under the under the weight of, what, of the work that's going on. So I'm just after sort you know the, the I don't think the future council project to be viewed as a cure for all for some of our, our slipping categories. And I just want some assurance that those amours, it is appropriate that they're being allocated from the future council rather than dealt with by the officer that's listed as being accountable. Because one of the beauties of this scheme is that we see very quickly who's accountable uh, and know where to go to for information. So it, it's kind of basically just um, do you think it's appropriate that they're going under the future council project instead of just being dealt with normally? Thanks, Chair. Yeah, really important question, actually. Um, I, 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 stated, I think the reality is, is that we're, we're, we're rolling into the future council program in order to get the greater sense of the, the, the scheme to deliver this. So I think the policy performance committee's opportunity to monitor this remains exactly the same. So it's not the case that this is now being you know, into a long grasp because there's another program on its way. I think it's actually getting the benefits from it. I think a, 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 I'll touch on it a bit remaining now just in the, in the following report. For example, in terms of one of our um, future savings options around transforming business support, we've moved that into the future council program. However, it still could deliver that amount of money that was set out to your position to monitor that and to deliver. Chair, thank you. 
Um, I think it's DV13, page 69, for example, at the top. It's to replace Windows XP with Windows 7.
ways to make sure that they are working to the uh, guidelines that we give that both our local and obviously nationally set. Thank you, Martin. Um, Move on. Yeah. So, can I ask, what are the issues with guidelines for the trade market to die? And what are the guidelines by this um, set by members? Is it worth reviewing? How long ago was that? Through you, Chair. I think it was either two or probably three years ago. The answer to your question is that the bailiffs are no longer bailiffs, they are debt collection agents. Uh, from the 1st of April, the new rules that have now changed, so their policies, the way they charge, if it's the intention to bring it back during the current municipal year, because we will be looking at an agreement as to how our bailiffs will operate under this new system, because in part that will then be linked to a new contract for bailiff recovery, because the bailiff contract ends this financial year. So yes, it will be coming back to you, both our bailiff policy, uh, as well as a standard of legality because the contract comes to an end this year. Uh, no. so, those just in the case he wants to speak, I, re I really want to move on. So, uh, just ready. Just, uh, is, if uh, if Malcolm is remaining with us for the item which is later on, agenda item 7 of modern day, I really want us to understand how the figures on page 91 of that report on debt recovery relate to what we've been hearing. And um, um, just flag it up now so that Martin stays with us for that item. Uh, because it's in the accounts receivable bit on page 91 where we have 22.7 million debt, for which 11 and a half million is on its third reminder. So we can perhaps understand that at the time later on. Okay, thanks for that, Martin. Uh, Steve, do you want to come down and talk to us?
help was the rolling out and literally going around to each building and replacing the equipment um, in a very systematic way. Our target is around about 400 a week, which is quite a challenge. And so it made sense to have a third party organisation to do that, otherwise it would take account of a lot of my activities. So I think I'm quite pleased that there's been a lot of solid progress on that. Um, Given the Microsoft negotiation session of governments, the, the extension, does that indicate that there's probably about fewer power policies in civil situations? Uh, uh, Chair, yes. I mean, I mean, certainly what they haven't done is, is to specify how many computers each different authority and also the, uh, the health service, the police and central government, but there is a large portion of uh, Windows XP around the organisation, a lot of organisations in varying degrees from a few to most of the whole state. So I couldn't really say how many, but certainly most organisations get so. Simon? Chair, thank you. Um, two questions. Uh, on your report about in, in how it will be achieved. Three, work agreed scope and cost. We don't know how much it's going to cost yet. Um, uh, yes, yes, if I to the Chair. We have, we, have got some, we have got some costs, and we have got some details of the unit costs, but we're working with uh, Future Council to work out exactly how many people will be in the, the organisation, following the reorganisation, and therefore the actual exact numbers of PCs to be rolled out is not finally determined, is one aspect of the variable cost. Another aspect of the variable cost is there are a lot of old IT systems and as we're working through that, we're working out which ones need replacing. And we haven't got the exact cost of all those computer systems that need replacing. And when we got those, we've got a provisional budget for this work, but we haven't got the final cost for all those systems we're working through that. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, so, okay, so the first part, we don't know how many people we're buying for yet. When will that figure and that part of the cost become clearer? It will become uh, it will become clear over the next few weeks. I mean, literally, one part of the future council uh, for the assessment and, and analysis phase on the questionnaire is what people you've got and what are their IT needs. Um, and the real issue is whether we provide them with a laptop, a chat working, or a desktop. And but it's important to get the right balance because if we do an agile working the laptop more, but they're more flexible and more usable, and I don't want to get them by the wrong amount, no. but certainly it will talk to a few weeks rather than months. Okay, and do we have a, a budget that's set aside currently? Yes, we've got, we've got, we've got a budget set aside for this. Uh, of? We've got approximately 2.5 million okay. for this, and, and that's within the originally planned budget, and that was planned some, 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 some while ago, so it's not new money, it's well within, it's within the planned budget in place. And last part, please. Um, of the number of machines you've looked at thus far, the percentage that aren't capable of hosting Windows 7 that you have to buy new machines for. Right. Um, what we've done, we've done an analysis of how old the, the, the computers are. Um, and what we've concluded is those 90% will need replacing, 10% are two years or the other. So we're looking at actually replacing approximately 90%.
drops before the that's what I've come I mean, more accurate when I plan to be when I know, you know, can we actually achieve that? That's the very fast
I, I, I don't think we should assume that because everyone's done something one way, that that's the correct way. And also, I think with an object, again, I don't want to get on technically, but two, two, 2007 is, is not the version after XP. There's been versions in between the consultancy oh, as, as well as well with this version. And also, 2008 is not is not the latest version. We're already going to one behind. So, can, can you explain that? To that? I can certainly explain if I may, Chair. I can explain that we have gone to Windows 7 because a lot of the systems that we've got and most of our other organisations have got don't work very well with Windows 8. So actually Windows 8, which is, you're quite right, is the latest one, doesn't work with a lot of all the mainstream systems. And therefore, we made a conscious decision to go to Windows 7, which has been, as you quite rightly say, has been around for a few years, but at least we know all our IT systems, or a lot of our IT systems, will work out. Some will not even work with 2007, and even more will not work with 2008. So we made a conscious decision to go to 2007 to make sure we protect the IT system we run.